Hi everyone, thank you for watching this presentation today. My name is Donna Howarth, I'm the founder of Middle East Menopause Organisation, uh, MEMO, formerly known as Harmonious Her, and recently had a name change to incorporate the whole of the Middle East as opposed to just the UAE. So this presentation will just give you a small insight into work that I do in the Middle East. So moving forward, what I shall do is to hide this uh, camera so you can see the full screen. So where is the UAE? The UAE is in the, the Middle East. It was formed in 1971 and consists of seven, seven emirates. And the ones that you'll recognize is Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And surprisingly, 90% of the population is expatriates. So as I've already mentioned, MEMO was founded in January of 2020, and it was born out of my own frustrations with regards to the lack of awareness and the lack of support that was avail available for my menopause and the HRT that I needed. So what are MEMO's aims? The aims are to raise menopause awareness and to grow the support group further to encapsulate the whole of the Middle East, to encourage consistency in professional advice, care and support, and encourage wider availability of body identical HRT as opposed to um, bio-identical. And more importantly, to establish a regional menopause organization. In 2020, I created a survey entitled Menopause Matters UAE to bring attention to the work that I do and to kind of, you know, gather a, a small snapshot of what the menopausal women of the UAE were experiencing. And it was a rather crude survey, uh, uh, to be fair. And in that I'd never done a survey, survey before. And I'm sure that if the survey was repeated now, we would get a lot more responses and a lot more information. But it did what I wanted it to do in that it, it encapsulated, you know, the, the menopausal age of 40 you know, the, the perimenopausal age, that is, of 41, right up to postmenopause at, at 60, etc. So the barriers, language, as I've said, you know, that there's a lot of expatriates in the, the region, lots of different languages, and there's an assumption made there that everybody speaks English, but they don't do. Unfortunately, I don't speak um, any other language. So, you know, the survey was quite limited in that respect. Again, everybody's understanding and knowledge of menopause. Not everybody knows what menopause is, limitations with regards to technology and, you know, embarrassment, shame and stigma that comes with menopause too and cultural messages and traditional um, messages too. So as a result of the, the survey, found that 83% were not taking HRT, 44% weren't taking anything at all, and that included supplementation as well. And with regards to current menopause services that were available at that time, only 9% were confident and 51% lacked confidence and 40% had not seen a, a healthcare professional with regards to menopause at all. So what support is needed in the, in the UAE? Well, we need specialised clinics. We need more HRT availability. And there's a real lack of menopause awareness. You know, social media doesn't really mention it apart from the support group that I have. There are other people in the UAE that are starting to raise their voices. And, you know, every little bit counts. Magazines and newspapers and radio, they're more or less silent but again I have to say since the survey was done you know the the word menopause is popping up in a particular radio station in Dubai which is great we do need more specific menopause information with regards to nutrition alternative therapies exercise groups and more awareness groups so we can raise that that knowledge symptoms so 
with regards to menopause, there's always that misconception that it's all about hot flashes or hot flushes. Well, as we can see here, 60% of the women that answered the survey talked about, uh, you know, gaining weight, sleep problems, fatigue, tired and brain fog. And obviously we can see further down night sweats and low mood and, and vaginal dryness. So again, menopause is so much more than hot flashes and flushes. So how are the menopause women in the UAE coping? Well, 21% are good, 54% are okay, but 25% were struggling and feeling overwhelmed in the menopause. And that is quite concerning given the anxiety, depression and suicidal thoughts that some women can have. So that just goes to show, show that more awareness is desperately needed in the, in the region. So I did reach out to the, the members of MEMO. I have nearly a thousand members on Facebook and I have a presence on Instagram and Twitter too. And these quotations come from the, the, the members um, from, you know, from, the, from the Facebook group. So I'm just very briefly going to go through and look at those and uh, just share that information with you. So one lady in particular, she visited for her uh, menopause symptoms and she was put on medication for a completely different condition that does have side effects. And she, she did reveal that those you know, that medication did make her feel a, a lot worse than she already was. And through her own research, she managed to you know, come off that medication and looked at her diet and, and felt you know, much better uh, within a short amount of time. So again, all these quotations, they are uh, anonymous, you know, sharing of experiences, because again, referring back, you know, there's still a lot of stigma, shame and embarrassment with regards to menopause. And, you know, some are not happy to reveal their identity. So th this lady, you know, expresses that she, she finds it difficult or found it difficult to talk to a doctor with regards to HRT and that she needs to find somebody that, that was open-minded and you know and to try find somebody that's not going to question when are you going to come off them and don't you think you're too young to take HRT so this person here said that she should seen two consultants both confirmed she was in perimenopause but you know they, they, they still didn't feel there was a need for her to go on to HRT even though she presented with all the symptoms so she found her own therapy by way of acupuncture as an alternative yes it is costly and she now feels that she has to you know cope with the menopausal symptoms that she experiences so on top of all the menopause and the symptoms and the stress that it causes the majority of women have to do their own research and they have to find their own doctor support to support them in their menopause and if they are lucky to find somebody then there's the, you know, the issue of HRT. Then if you do find your HRT and when your prescription runs out, then you're left wondering if you're going to be able to get the supplies. And, it, you know, again, quite possibly there could be a period of time where you are without HRT because the supplies are hit and miss. And some of the experiences here, quite common, and I know this is quite common across the globe, being prescribed antidepressants for the symptoms, being referred to different consultants. This lady was referred to a psychiatrist. It's loneliness, feeling that, that you know, you're on your own and that there's nobody to talk to. And as I've mentioned, HRT is difficult to find and the stocks can be quite variable and that there's a real lack of information in the region too. So again, that draws on, on loneliness and being on your own. Coming to Saudi Arabia, Tenna is a sanitary uh, product company who created a video to raise awareness because in Arabic, menopause means age of despair. And it's quite, you know, it's the, there's negative connotations there and they felt that they needed to change that. So they changed the meaning to age of renewal and tried to highlight the, the you know, the positives of going through menopause. So they've done quite an enlightening video and more importantly was done in this in Saudi Arabia where the women in Saudi their their experiences are 
quite considerably worse than the women in the UAE, as they have little to no HRT at all. And the same can be said with regards to professional care as well. So if you have a chance to look at that video, please do. So stay, well, coming back to, you know, the UAE region, uh, one of the universities in Dubai did a small study, in fact, one of the first studies in the region with regards to Emirati women's knowledge about the menopause and HRT. And again, this was quite enlightening. The survey was done in Arabic, so, it, you know, it was, it aimed specifically at local ladies. And in conclusion, they found that, that you know, the Emirati women's knowledge of menopause and HRT um, related to the level of education and the, the employment status as well. And, you know, the end point there is there is a need for raising more awareness with regards to symptoms and more importantly, for informing these ladies of what their management options are as well. So this gentleman, Hisham Arab, is based in Saudi Arabia, and he posed a very interesting question. Should the management of menopause in the Middle East be different? Well, yes and no, because we do need to recognise the rich diversity of culture, um, traditions, etc., that, you know, are in the Middle East. And you can see here that, you know, he's already mentioned cultural, religious and family issues that contribute immensely to the perception of menopause and again this you know the the socio socioeconomic status can ever affect the severity of symptoms too but it all comes down that you know we we, we need to be establishing more specialized clinics and introducing hrt and alternatives to help these women in the menopause and this is not just exclusive to saudi arabia this is to you know right across the board, right across the Middle East in general. So with regards to Middle Eastern women, women, they experience menopause earlier than Western women. UK, the average age is 51. UAE and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is quite similar, but Egypt is 46. But I have to say that the research and studies that were done to highlight the, the average age of menopause is quite dated. And, you know, researchers do feel and I do feel that if this this research was repeated again, then you will probably find that the average ages would be more in line with with UK. But again, we need to raise awareness. We need to equip you know, these women with, with knowledge so they can make their own um, informed decisions with regards to menopause. So currently in the UAE of the Middle East, there is no official menopause body to represent the, the, the needs of women living here. You know, we've got the international menopause groups, we've got the you know, menopause groups in the UK, North America and the Australasia, but nothing specific to the, the Middle East. So, you know, it's very important, it's imperative that, you know, this is addressed because we need to raise awareness. We need to inform women of the choices and what's available to them. And more importantly, professional care needs to be consistent because it can be quite bluntly hit and miss where your experience will vary from one consultant to another in, in that one has up-to-date current knowledge of of menopause guidelines where another is still referring back to the 2002 study and we all know what happened there so you know that very much needs to be brought in line so as my you know with my work with memo i have liaised with several consultants to help raise awareness in the the area and the region and i've created a menopause specialist list i've also created a checklist that patients can take with them when they go to see their consultants and it hope it all helps in getting the right support and getting the right advice and information and i have listed their special mention to to various doctors as, as their help has been amazing in in me in turn being able to help the women of you know, the, the, the UAE in particular. And, you know, it's something that I've not been able to do on my own because the, 
it's just difficult to get information out to the women of the UAE due to the language barriers, due to you know, cultural issues, due to um, you know, technology. And again, we've got different nationalities and different understandings of what menopause is. So there is, I guess, more barriers in the UAE as opposed to what there would be in the U. UK and America and other countries, for example. And that's not to say that other countries aren't worse off than the UAE. I'm very sure that there is. We all have different experiences. So it's, you know, it's something that we need do need to address on a global scale. So that, you know, it really is a small snapshot there of, of the work that I do in the, the UAE. And I do invite you all to, to look at my social media to get more of an understanding of, of what my work involves. And please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to ask questions. 15 minutes is not a long time to get across what happens in the, the UAE, not the work that I try to do. But we do all have to work together. As I've mentioned before, menopause is a global issue. It's not a Western issue. Every single country on the planet will be affected. And we all need to stand together and we all need to work together to, re to raise menopause awareness on a global scale. So I'm just going to put the, the camera back on there just to thank you all for your attention. Thank you for listening to the presentation and I wish you all well and thank you so much for your time. Thank you.